welcome to How Inez Rolls. It's chilly outside. It's so cold. And it's perfect weather for some white chicken chili. What do you say? Let's get started. It's gonna be so easy. Okay, so for this recipe, you'll just need some chicken, some cream cheese, a can of corn, um, a ranch pe seasoning packet, but I'm just gonna use this. And then I have some chili, some cumin, and some onion powder. Also, you'll need black beans, but because my family isn't a fan of black beans, just me, like I'll eat them, I'm gonna add it to my portion later. To me, that sounds like a good plan, a good trade-off, so to say. So I'm gonna, I have already sprayed my, um, my crock pot, so I'm gonna start putting the chicken in. I'll bring you closer. First off, we're going to put some chicken. Now I have thin sliced chicken, so I am going to, it only called for two, so I'm just going to put, hmm, that one was a pretty big one, so I'll just put them, those three. If they were smaller size, I would have put in four. So I'm gonna dump in a whole can of corn, and a can of Rotel, and we're gonna put some seasonings in this. Um, you're supposed to use a packet of ranch, so I'm just gonna put in uh, three of these, three tablespoons. Now, my family isn't too fond of ranch, so I'm wondering if they'll be able to taste this. I think the seasoning is fine. <laughs> so let's go ahead now, we're gonna do some cumin. Get some of those like yummy chili seasonings. I love cumin. Such a good taste. It's what actually makes very um, authentic tasting like Mexican food. We're gonna do some onion powder. Also a teaspoon. And I will link below uh, the recipe that I am using in the description box because I like for my friends to have exact measurements if you're interested. And then some chili. Oh, yes. So what's gonna make this white? We're putting some cream cheese in this now to be using the beans now would be the time that you would add it in as well J just rinsed and uh, drained and I'm gonna be putting this low because um, it's only about 8 in the morning so I'm gonna put this nice and low and um, I'll check on it after work and that's it you guys we dumped it all in and now it's time to cook so I have it on low for six to eight hours and looks like it's, it's gonna be delicious, I already know. <laughs> so let's just get that lid on and let it do its thing. I love crock pots. So with it being so close to Halloween and with temperatures dropping, having chili just seems like the perfect menu, don't you think? Every time I think about Halloween and trick-or-treating, I think chili, it's like synonymous for me. So a white chicken chili today sounds delicious. So I'm also going to be making a gluten-free cornbread. Now you could use any cornbread mix. Um, I love putting uh, frozen corn into my batter when I'm making it just because I love having little bits of corn in it. And one of my favorite cornbreads is Famous Dave's. That one kind of tastes like cake. I also have researched on Pinterest that you could just take some um, Jiffy with a Jiffy cornbread and add uh, a white or a yellow cake mix together to it and it really will taste like a cake. So there's some different options. So let me get the ingredients for making our cornbread. It will be, again, so easy because if you know me, it has to be easy, it has to be fast and we're running a little bit of errands later, so I need to make sure everything's done. So I have all my ingredients out. I have um, some almond milk that's supposed to be um, unsweetened, but mine sweetened because I want to go for a sweeter cornbread. <laughs> and I have almond flour, which is gluten-free, and cornmeal, which is gluten-free. 
But like I said, you could just get any cornbread and just kind of make it a little bit of yours by maybe adding a little bit of honey and even adding some sweet frozen corn. Makes it so good. But I want Paul to enjoy this meal as well. So we're just gonna be putting like a cup of everything. Almond flour is not cheap, you guys. I just have to say it. I got this because we are, I was wanting to do a cookie recipe, which I still am going to do. It's just, uh, <laughs> I just need to get another recipe, I think, for it. I was looking online and I wrote it all out and I was like, maybe I forgot something. Anyways, stay tuned. So I'm gonna be doing a cup of the flour and then a cup of the cornmeal, then a cup of the almond milk. Pretty easy, don't you think? And I'm gonna be preheating my oven at 425. I'm gonna do that right now. We're also getting things ready for my classroom for Halloween parties that are gonna be coming up in the next couple of days. Um, and so I wanted to show you some really super easy, kid-friendly uh, treats that you can do with your family or with your littles, uh, depending on what you are doing for Halloween. This could just add a little extra specialness to it. Okay, so I'm going to add my butter as well and i'm going to start uh, mixing this in my butter is a little bit warm it was supposed to be just softened and i just went to the store and bought some so <laughs> i was kind of surprised we ran out what <laughs> so let me just get this mixed in and then i'll add in um a few tablespoons of some honey which since my um my almond milk is sweetened I won't even add three. Maybe I'll do like two. And an egg. Though I was making some French toast this weekend and it turned out so good. I used um, Ashley's eggs from the farm. They were awesome. It made such a nice custard. Up here, I like to use a um, my little tea a little tea strainer. Can you see that? <laughs> As like my little mini sifter when I'm using um, like thing, little things that need to be sifted. That way I don't have to bust out a big sifter. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> so pretty much all of this is done. I'm just gonna mix this in. I'm gonna add a little bit of corn and then I'm just gonna cook it at 425 for about 20 minutes. So easy, right you guys? Who knew that cornbread was this easy? Homemade even. So you can see I just put it in a bread pan and then just set my timer. With just a few ingredients, you can make some very cutesy and special Halloween uh, treats for your family, for neighbors, whichever. Um, so I like to use uh, the kettle corn popcorn and then I just um, a while ago I bought like a couple packs of these like I don't know like lunch lady <laughs> is that what they kind of are these like lunch lady gloves and just you're gonna fill them up with pop with popcorn so they're like monster hands it's so fun and I also but I forgot you can put in a uh, one candy corn in each nail and it looks like a little nail it's so cute if you want it to even be a little more festive you can take one of the one of those spider rings and clamp, like cut the back and then clamp it around one of the fingers before you tie it off so fun right and then the kids could totally get involved and enjoy this and this can be like their snack so you can see where it just kind of takes a, a little bit but you're gonna fill that up so easy Another thing is witches brooms. So you'll just get um, some um, peanut butter cups, some miniature ones, take off the wrapper, and it's literally stick. The pretzel stick in. It's a little witch broom, so cute. Now you can also use uh, pretzel sticks and put them into um, Oreos, but get the double stuffed Oreos. So there's more um, 
icing in the middle so that it has more to kind of stick into. And then you can make little spiders. Isn't that a cute idea? And then another thing that we are doing in our classroom that all the kids love is ghosts. So using a, just a Tootsie Pop, you could you actually use any lollipop that has a bigger, not like a Dum Dum, but something bigger. And a tissue, and that's it you guys. It's literally super easy. You just tie it on and then you draw a little face. So, so fun. These are like little fun things that can be in a lunch box for a child. They would love these kinds of things, don't you think? As long as their school allows. <laughs> uh, so just a little. Yikes, there it is, the ghost. So this is what we'll be doing in the next couple of days, is making all these little fun treats for my classroom and for my family. So now I need to start shredding that chili. It is smelling divine. I can't wait to eat. I just opened the chili. It's been like two, six hours. So that chicken is ready to be shredded. And that's it, you guys. I'm just going to um, rinse and cook up some black beans and put aside some for me and add the beans to it. So good. And so I thought I would have to take out the chicken. No, it's shredding right inside the bowl or in the crock pot. And so I'm just gonna give it a good stir with all of that cream cheese goodness. Oh man, this is so good. Let me know in the comments if you like your chili with beans or without beans. Cause I'm a big bean person. <laughs> like I love beans. Um, my family does not. So, I am a fan of the beans, but just to make sure that the boys are gonna eat it, I'll just make mine on the side. Looking good. Okay, so this took so much longer than 20 minutes. And this is my first time making the gluten-free. It is just okay to me. It's not like special, it's not delicious. I can't wait to make it again. It'll be okay for today and I think I'm just now in a sour mood because it took 45, 50 minutes. So I don't think it had a winning chance. But look at how yummy this looks. Oh man, so, so good. Can't wait to try some more. So this is so good, you guys. Oh, so good. Let me know in the comments if you have a white chicken chili or just a chicken chili recipe, or if you wanna send me some of your favorite recipes for chili, since I am craving it right now, send it to me either in a DM or you could even send it to my email at howinezrolls at gmail.com. I would love them. I am still wanting to make now a red beef chili, so. I have a rest, couple recipes in mind, but maybe I'll be making yours next. So thanks so much for stopping by. Give this video a thumbs up, and if you're new, please subscribe, and stick around, rollers. You just never know what I'll be rolling out next. So good.